is it possible to prevent getting cancer? Yeah, it's very possible to prevent getting cancer. The problem is we live in an environment that makes it very difficult uh, to implement the, um, what must be done to prevent cancer. All cancers start from damage to mitochondrial respiration in a particular cell, in a particular part of the body. So how do you prevent damage to the mitochondria uh, of the cells uh, that ultimately elicit? So if you, if you keep, metabolize ketone bodies, that protects mitochondria from the development of reactive oxygen species, which ultimately leads to um, disorder and uh, entropy. Entropy is the second law of thermodynamics, which is disorder. Uh, we all die from entropy. Uh, we don't live forever because our bodies break down. That's called uh, uh, disorder, entropy second law of thermodynamics. So in order to w delay entropy, you keep your body and your energy metabolism as, as clean as possible. So if you burn ketone bodies as opposed to sugar, um, uh, which is pyruvic, pyruvic acid basically comes, uh, most foods come down to pyruvic acid, you can, you can delay entropy uh, and that will allow you to live longer. The problem is most people don't want to do that and they don't know about that, and therefore they, what I just told you was not known by the majority of people. So, yeah, so you can prevent cancer by keeping your mitochondria healthy. How do you do that? You have them burn ketones. How do you burn ketones? You do water-only therapeutic fasting or very small amounts of these keto-type diets, small amounts. Blood sugar goes down, ketones go up, cells burn ketones, entropy is reduced, and you keep your cells healthier and unlikely will get cancer. Cancer comes from damage to the respiration. You protect the respiration, you don't get cancer. But the cancer risk goes down precipitously. Who can do this? Primitive peoples on the planet, that uh, Eskimos, Africans in the, in the jungles, uh, and maybe in the rainforests, these are the kinds of people that um, live a very pristine life. Of course, they die from infections and all these other kinds of things, but they don't get, they, they generally don't get cancer. Cancer is unheard, was, was unheard of in some of these primitive populations. Um, it is a, it's an interesting point. If you look at um, humans and chimps and gorillas are primates, and we share a very, we're, we're, are, we have a very close genetic composition. Our genome and the chimp and the gorilla's genome is very similar. You know, we all differ by a few percentage here. So, Here's the situation. Humans have cancer, a lot of cancer. Um, chimps and gorillas have very little cancer. Uh, how is it possible that these three species, all primates, all similar genetically, could have such a different rate of cancer? Chimps and gorillas don't have the kinds of cancers that humans have, and yet we're all very similar genetically. Well, what do chimps and gorillas eat? They eat their natural foods, leaves and whatever they and fruits and vegetables and these kinds of things. Um, they eat some meat, they eat some, at least the chimps do, and, and you look at their diets and lifestyle. Chimps and gorillas have a different diet and lifestyle than we do. Um, they, they're eating their natural foods. Our natural foods were berries and nuts and other animals. Um, we deviated so far from what we were traditionally eating before civilization. Uh, and therefore, we put all of ourselves at risk uh, for cancer. Uh, I don't, the control experiment would be to take chimpanzees and give them Coca-Cola, Dunkin's Donuts, smoking, and, and uh, all the things that we do. And I would be shocked if they didn't get a whole bunch of cancer. And you look at the dogs. Okay, dogs evolved from wolves. If you go to the wild, wolves rarely get cancer. If you, you know, wolves aren't running around with all. Domesticated dogs, uh, cancer is the number one killer of domesticated dogs. So what are the dogs eating? They're eating the same crap that we're eating, right? There's all this the artificial grains put in the dog foods and all these different kinds of things. So they're eating abnormal foods in relationship to their evolutionary past. We as a species are eating foods that are not consistent with our evolutionary past. The consequence is cancer heart disease, cardiovascular disease, dementia, all these different things. So clearly we have the organisms, we have these already shown that 
But who is going to go back and live on, on elephant bone marrow and, uh, you know, um, elk and uh, buffalo, um, rarely cooked? You know, it, it, we're not going to do that. So we just have to be aware that the foods in our environment are putting us at, at, at risk for cancer. And, and the food industry has, has are, are magnificent in tweaking the tastes of these foods to make them, to make them extremely desirable. I mean, nobody can deny that, that these foods taste great. And uh, so it's hard, to, it's hard to deviate from the environment when you, everything tastes and, and looks so good. The gorilla and the chimp um, are not, are, are, are not um, you know, tested like this. You know, I don't know what would happen if you gave them pizza every day and Coke. They, I'm sure they would, they would eat it, you know, and they'd probably like it, and they would get fat, and, and they would have cancer. <laughs> so it's just, so put, you have to put things into evolutionary perspective. If you don't know the evolution of the organisms on the planet or how we all got here today, then you have difficulty understanding these concepts. But when you understand biological evolution, then you understand the situation we're in today. Thank you.